interesting. Now we'll come to this. Again, coming back to the database topic, guys. This is one of the most interesting and one of the most crucial topic. And let me tell you, uh, I can like I can tell you over the call here right now. It's being recorded as well. You go ahead and read as much as as much as video you watch about the consistent hashing. Nobody talks about the real uh, uses where actually it is being used. What kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, code or uh, uh, you know what kind of uh, uh, algorithm they are using. Uh, you will you'll not find that everybody will simply come and draw a ring and they'll say, okay, server here, 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 if not, doesn't find here. So what I'm trying to see here is, I'm trying to do here is, I'll draw, I'll, I'll walk you through that. Why do we need it? And what, uh, you know, uh, uh, in what um, scenario we use the consistent hashing, okay? So it, it all starts with, you know, uh, distribution, the distri distribution of data, okay? As we grow in size, we need to distribute the data to multiple machines. It's like not feasible that you should be storing the data on the machine. So there are two ways to use. I will talk about you know the uh, the real use case and how we landed up to the consistent hashing and what exactly it is. Cassandra, MongoDB, or any other tool. Okay, they use internally. You don't implement it. But for other services, maybe for MySQL or some other database also, it's your choice, whatever, in, for any databases, you can write your own consistent logic as well, consistent hashing logic, and most of the people does, okay? They want to write their own logic to distribute the data load, okay? So that is where people use, uh, I mean, in, in, in terms of what usability. So let's start with a very simple thing, okay? So we had uh, uh, something sort of uh, uh, a client, right? And in the client, we, uh, you know, we connect to some app, right? And then app basically, uh, you know, stores and retrieve the data from the database, right? Then we talked about that. Hey, we'll have a multiple apps. You know, the uh, we'll have a load balancer in uh, here. Uh, there will be an LB here, and then um, that will be like app one, app two, app three, and then all will be connecting to this database, right? And we started saying there is a problem in the database, and what we do is we brought a concept of having a multiple databases, right? So what we'll do, we are seeing that okay, this database is you know crossing. A terabyte of disk space, I need to bring in another database as well so that we can distribute the traffic, we can distribute the load on this database. So what we do is we brought three database for writing the data or reading whatever, right? So what I want is I, I need to write a 30 million records, right? That is my estimation. So I'll just like try to, I will try to, I mean, this is not guaranteed, we'll try to do a even distribution of 10 million, 10 million records on this. This is my use case. This is what I want to achieve. Okay. How do we do that? We use consistent hashing for this. Okay. Now, prior to discussing what consistent hashing is and why, let's talk about what we could have done without the consistent hashing. What if the consistent hashing term was not coined or you were given a task, you were not aware of, aware of the consistent hashing. Uh, the simple thing what we can do is that, uh, uh, so this is your UI. This is what uh, people used to use when consistent hashing was not there. Okay, maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years back, whenever. Right? So uh, you have UI and uh, you, you are trying to store uh, details for uh, uh, user U1. Okay, uh, and um, this came to server. So what server, and there are three databases. Okay, I need to evenly distribute the data on these three databases. So the database size is three. Um, what I'll do here is, again, I'll apply a uh, hashing. That's why I talked about hashing, guys. So I'll apply hashing U1. I'll get some random number, okay? Again, I got a random number of 125. Then the famous modulo I will apply, and the modulo will be the number of servers, okay? So this will give me uh, 121, 2, 2, 4, 5, plus 2, plus 6. Uh, should have been... So I think it will be two, right? I think reminder will be two if I'm not wrong, okay? So it will go to the server number two. So this is server number one, server number two, server number three. So this particular U1 will be stored on the server number two. Similarly, we registered U2, we got some value around suppose 15, then we did a 15 modulo three, we got zero. Uh, okay, so if it is zero, this one, right? So we'll have a server number like this one, my bad. S0, S1, and S2, and then this will be like going to S1 and S2. So this will be going here. So if it is a zero, it will go to the server zero. So your U2 is stored here, right? So we can do a kind of a distribution using this and it's fine, it's working fine. There's no problem with that. But what is the problem do you think? We are able to distribute it, right? Uh, and it is not only on the user ID, it could be some other things as well. It could be on the 
multi tenant databases in case of multi tenant database you could have then okay i am catering to uh, multiple companies so i'll have a databases for each company and if any data comes for that company uh, we will do a hashing and put into their uh, of the databases uh, bandwidth bucket or whatever right so the hashing technique can be applied on any of the keys so let's not dive uh, deep into those things like what key and what not uh, the intention here is what is the problem with this setup i mean we are able to uh, distribute the data uh, you know kind of evenly across uh, s0 s1 and s2 what will be the problem with this approach uh, when skewed data the database will be heated up yeah. i'm sorry uh, yeah. let's see oh, one data Okay, Ram. Ram, let's talk about you, Ram. Yeah, tell me. Maybe one one database will be heated up. Heated up means okay. You means, you are, you are talking about uh, skewed traffic. Yes. Skewed data, right? It could be yes. that this guy had end up of eighty percent utilization. This guy is still at ten percent only. Yeah. That is a fair this one. This skewed traffic. Uh, Hari Narayan, you were saying something. Yeah, I was saying the same point. Yeah. Okay. So that is the problem. Anything else is there, guys? Uh, Ashutosh. Do you think that is there any problem with this approach apart from that? Okay, Pratik, I, I see you have muted, muted. Yeah, so I'm thinking about how we can further uh, scale the database if we are seeing any traffic yeah. limitation. Yes, so the scaling scaling means what will happen if I add a new node? This is a very big problem, and if add is there, then remove will also create a problem. Okay, let's talk about what will happen if you remove a node. We'll talk about the adding a node and why we will remove it. Okay, so it's a hardware machine. It is bound to fail, right? There will be a power loss. There will be uh, hard disk corruption. Uh, there will be a few other issues, right? Networking problem, whatever, right? One of these went down. Okay, if this went went down, what needs to be done, right? So the data. Has to be transferred from S0 to S1 or S2 because it has to be remapped. If not, then there will be a problem as the number of servers is now three. And if anybody do a modulo of three, they will land up to a server. Like suppose they got uh, suppose S0 is down. Now you have S1 and S2. Any any user ID whose uh, hashing key comes 15 and then uh, 15 or anything modulo divided by three, and if it comes to zero. they will try to go to this s0 and they will not get that data because that machine itself is not there so if you are trying to migrate those data to this s1 and s2 you will have to migrate the entire data set from s0 to s1 or s2 okay so this migration will be a huge migration because you know you have to do a lot of data shuffling here to there and then only you can do it this is for the problem with the removal what about the addition right now what i happened is i saw that okay fine you know there is one Two, three, four. There are now S zero, S one, S two. Now there is one more has come. S three has come. What was the model operator I was using? N was three. Now N is four. Right. So again, those distributions has to happen. Right. So that will also be a problem because this will be completely empty. I want the data to be you know kind of distributed again, and this will be a problem. So any uh, tool like Cassandra, MongoDB, or uh, you know DynamoDB. Uh, or anything they use a concept called consistent hashing okay technique in order to avoid this addition and removal and let's talk about how now this is where things start on the internet like if you google about consistent hashing or read youtube or anything they will start here they will not give you the background about what it was and how it works prior to this and that right so what they say is that the consistent hashing concept says instead of maintaining that fixed number of n and then doing a modulo uh, you know have something like a ring kind of a structure again we'll talk about the ring it's nothing but just a uh, an array which is pointing itself to itself and like that we'll talk about the data structures and all later i have written a sample java code i can give you a demonstration of that uh, so what we say that we will uh, basically uh, you know uh, have a ring inside instead of uh, uh, an array or something and then we will place so this this will have a size of uh, suppose i mean you know you are you are you are you are thinking about having a, a ring size of maybe a 10 million or uh, maybe 1 million or 100k generally typically people use these kind of size so basically your array size or that one will be a huge uh, linked list or whatever you use that will have a pretty huge size for this ring to ring and 
this ring also uh, the size uh, it could be uh, 1k as well or 10k or depending on how how scalable you are going to be it is going to be a thousand node machines or it is going to be a hundred node machines it could be going to be a 10 node machines or it is going to be uh, you know uh, 1 million uh, nodes whatever right like depends on whatever right so it depends on that and based on that you should uh, you know select your ring size i'll talk about why we are talking about this ring size okay and what you will do is you basically do uh, so once you've got this so suppose my hashing size is uh, 1000 i'm just taking the smaller number uh, so i have taken the 1000 size of the uh, this ring so the size of the ring is s equals to 1000 now what i'll do is uh, you know there are four servers server uh, s1 server s2 server s3 server s4 okay right now there are four servers as of now okay we'll think about how future it gets removed and deleted and what thing happens okay so what we'll do we'll do a hashing on top of it okay and after hashing we'll do a modulo operator of whatever the size so i'll not write 1000 i'll write s capital s denotes the size of this and this will suppose it landed here s1 here i always use s1 so let's use s0 s1 s2 s3 for simplicity uh s1 suppose landed here s2 here s3 here it's it's like uh, not perfectly balanced but still you know there is a long gap here and here okay so we have placed s0 s1 s2 s3 on that ring on that particular basically inserted that value there now let's see how the value will be stored hmm? so you came with a user user id uh, and what you will do you will do a hash of user id right and this will give and then you again apply the modulo operator of that size s so again you will get a value within the range of this ring so whatever value suppose this uh, user u1 you got a value of suppose 30 and uh, 30 is somewhere here suppose you know this server is at zeroth place this is at uh, 300 place this is at 600 s place this is at uh, 700 okay and then this range is total remaining there till uh, 300 so this is total 300 so there is a big gap here because we yes. have then the even distribution here so you did that and you ended up a value you got the user uh, hashing of that value after modulo applied you got a value 30 so your value will come here so if it comes here now if it falls in this particular zone the database you will select is you travel in the forward direction okay and whatever the server first you hit which is the s1 so the user u1's information will be stored in s1 server if we would have got something like 350 value then we could have stored uh, we could have landed here then we will again forward we will move forward in the clockwise direction we encounter the first server as s2 we will be storing that value in the s2 now we have stored the value now in order to get it suppose when we do a u1 get value we'll apply the hash we'll do the resizing or uh, desizing of that uh, uh, whatever 1000 or whatever we will again get that value we'll end up land up in this particular zone we'll travel in forward direction whatever the server we encounter we will query that particular database and we will definitely get our data from there so did it solve the problem so far no i mean this we, we were able to achieve with that also right there was no problem with that right so what problem did we solve with this this first i'll pause here because this is little uh, little uh, you know kind of complex i would say i'm not sure Uh, did you find that way but i had to do a lot of homework in order to understand when i first learned about consistent hashing i, I read about a lot of documents go went through a lot of videos and then i understood like four years five years back so uh, anyone has any questions so far how what the consistent hashing is we'll talk about how it solved that addition and removal problem and about the skew traffic we haven't come to the skew traffic that it will be the still problem we'll talk about that but so far did you have do you have any question okay cool So, Brad, you want to ask something? Uh, so, this hashing that we applied, we are getting thirty-three fifty. So, is it not that same modulo operator that we are doing for hashing? I'm sorry. Can you come again? So, after hashing, the number that you get, for example, the first example that you mentioned, let's say we get thirty, and when you move forward, you uh, encounter with server S one. So, that value will store in server S one. Not right? that value. The user information will be stored. User information. Yes, exactly. So, this thirty or the three fifty that we are getting, it is after the hashing that we apply. After the right? hashing, yes, it has to be within that range, right? Because we do a modulo operator of S. 
that it has to oh, s is the size oh, of the ring okay, okay. s is the size of the ring s is the ring size okay we'll always see there is a very i mean uh, always uh, understand the importance of modulo operator it's a very powerful operator and it helps solve a lot of problems like this okay so whenever you work with hashing and all these things the modulo operator is one of the backbone of that to map something to a fixed range whenever you want something to be found in a within a range always apply the modulo operator okay mm -hmm. but did it is it clear that you guys have understood that how this mapping will be done and which data will be stored in where any question don't guys don't assume that and if you want me to repeat i'll repeat it if anybody is not clear about this so regarding the ring size i didn't understand how, why, how, how did we choose the ring size i mean why did we choose there is no formula to it uh, i am afraid to say that you know I, I even i don't have much awareness of that but see as i was talking about you right uh, you you will have some projections in your mind right when you start your project that okay i am going to have uh, you know that's what we did that uh, do that uh, estimation right uh, mm -hmm. when i talked about the back of the envelope i yesterday also i posted that in slack channel when you do the estimation you kind of know how much data is going to be stored uh, you know and based on that you can take a call that okay there there is going to be hardly 10 or 20 nodes if there are 20 nodes uh, feel free to have a size of 5000 10000 of machine so you can you can have that ring size of 5000 but there is no formula as such i mean if your nodes are 1000 you maybe keep it for 100k or something sort of because in future you want to have a scoping for that and one more thing i'll talk about it why do we need to keep a ring size pretty big i'll tell you why We'll come to that later. So generally, it should be at least hundred times or one thousand times of the size of your servers, or maybe ten thousand. Okay, I'll tell you why do we need, and it is always a good that we uh, use higher ring size. Uh, we will talk about that later. Okay, uh, why why do we need this? Okay, the higher size we could have achieved with a smaller ring size also, and but why do we keep it? I'll, I'll talk about it. Okay, so let's park this for now. Okay. Uh, Cool. So we are good with this. Now there is a still a problem. Okay. So one thing is fine. If we uh, uh, if we add a new server, let's talk about that. Then we'll talk about the problem with this approach as well in the consistent hashing as well. So we add one more server S4, right? So the S4 uh, it can come where here, anywhere. Like suppose this S4 has landed here, right? So so what you will do is that you will now you know start uh, shifting the elements. So whatever was the element which was pointing. Uh, between these these range these range suppose the s4 s3 s4 has landed to 25th position okay 25th number so the elements from 0 to 24 or 25th inclusive that was mapped to which server guys which server i want you to speak which s1. server it was s1, s1 right but now there has been a new server has been added and they want to take the, that traffic as well, right? So the S, S4 will start taking those values. So what do you need to do? You need to migrate. You need to move from 0 to 25th all the data to the S4 server so that when they do a get between these range, it will go and take a look from that. So basically, there will be a migration of data from S1 to S4. And these are very minimal migration compared to that huge data migration, what we just talked about. OK, so we have solved this problem. Not only that. What if if one server goes down, the S3 went down. So all the data between S2 to S3, that means from range 600 to 700, which were mapped to the S3, they will also get mapped to the S0 now. Okay. So you are very smoothly, you are very uh, easily, you are able to do the management of addition and removal of the servers. And that is what happens in any bigger uh, enterprise applications like Amazon, if you AWS and all that. Node keeps on going, coming, addition, subtractions keeps happening, auto scaling, uh, auto scaling. Uh, you know, uh, there are two types of auto scale, right? It is like up and down, right? Basically, uh, scale up, scale down. So if a scale up happens, a scale down happens, you can easily manage this. And this is very, uh, you know, useful, beneficial. But there is still a problem. The problem is, just think here, right? Now, the, the data from 600 to 1000 is lying with S0. And the data between 0 to 25 is lying with S4. So S4 is utilized just 5%. The S0 is utilized 95%. The data is pretty skewed. This is called skewed data. So this problem we are not able to solve yet. This is still the problem with the consistent hashing. So we are able to solve this dynamic nature of this, that okay, there will be a less data movement, but the skewed traffic we are not able to solve with this as well. What we will do? What are we supposed to do there in that case? If we are still facing this skewed traffic, which is pretty bad, what we will do is 
we need to have a something similar con some something concept called virtual nodes okay so what virtual node means so suppose there are four servers as 0 s1 s2 s3 we will create the aliases of this s1 0 as uh, let's have a naming convention something like uh, s0 uh, maybe a1 s0 a2 oh man i should be better with these things okay uh, naming conventions so let's have it like uh, s0 a s0 b s0 c s0 d s1 a s1 b s1 c s1 d and so on for this also s3 a till s3 d so i am just creating a uh, virtual nodes for s0 there are four nodes similarly for this also similarly for this also now how it will help me is that now what we'll do is i'll make it go through this again the hashing for all the four names so s0 a has landed here s0 b has landed here s0 c has landed here s0 d has landed here s1 a landed here s1 b landed here s1 c landed here s1 d landed here then s2 right a b c then s3 a b s3 c okay i think you guys might have got the idea what i'm trying to do here right so we are trying to minimize the window right that is queue traffic because if s0 is present at multiple places so these are not actual real servers guys okay the real server is still s0 only we are just creating a multiple names and we are distributing that in that particular ring so that now just think about these ranges okay 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 110 120 whatever right okay uh, so ring size is suppose till 200 uh, my ring size is 200 here okay so what has happened now here is if any value which comes from s0 to s10 that will land up in the s a s1 a which is nothing but s1 physical server okay anything which basically lands between 70 to 80 that will land into s1 3 that is also s1 anything which lands between uh, s3 to s1 that will be also landing to s1 only so we are trying to you know fill the servers uh, the with the virtual nodes and that is why if you have multiple like 10 nodes or something have a ring size of 1000 and create a replication of maybe uh, 50 or 100 so create a 100 uh, virtual nodes for s0 create 100 for this and reduce this window size you no know, within uh, the server to server so your distribution will become from that skewed traffic your distribution will be no more than the deviation 10% so any of the server will not have plus minus of more than 10% up and down okay either it could be less than 10% or more than 10% with each other not more than that so this is a call you need to take based on your experiment and decision and all that there is no formula as such but you more research about it and then you'll come to know but nobody will ask you that hey okay tell me how many rings is that you can give a rough number there is no problem with that but what we are trying to achieve here is that in this case we are able to distribute the servers in a better way but you should not do way too much as well the reason is if you do that way you will again defeat the purpose of that you know data migration movement maintaining those servers and all that so you should not be like okay i'll just have a uh, you know 1000 of uh, virtual nodes and then the distribution it no there should be a balance to of it okay this is what consistent hashing is guys about about